Ulamog, the infinite gyre. Trigger Zolodok, bend that wheel. Kozlak, the great distortion. Layer of loyalties. Hi, it's Vex. And today we have our Aldrazi commander, Zolodok, Void Gorger. And I hope I said that right. But if I didn't, correct me in the comments. Zulodok. Zulodok? Zulodok? Doc? Whatever it is. Five and a colorless. So six mana value total. Legendary creature Eldrazi. Seven, four. Seven is magic number. Always. Three hits. You're dead with commander damage. Could happen. The important part is colorless spells you cast from your hand with mana value seven or greater have Cascade, Cascade. Let us unpack that. By unpacking it, we're actually going to read the uh, reminder text on how it works. When you cast one, one Eldrazi or one of these guys, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Put the exile cards on the bottom of your library in a random order, then do it again. Okay. So how Cascade works is, let's say you have Zodok, Zoduk on the battlefield. You cast a seven mana Eldrazi. Let's uh, pick an Eldrazi here. Ulamog, the infinite Geyer, right? Then you start flipping from the top of your deck here. Let's say you flip Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. This is still on the stack. You're flipping it here, right? Cascade trigger. Then this is 10 is less than 11. This will get cast. Yes, you'll get the Ulamog's cast trigger. Then you flip again, right? Cosleck, right there. You can cascade again. This is 10 mana value less than 11 cast that you get the caster to draw up to seven cards so that is the cool part about it and then if you read it carefully here oh emerald's pop popping out there if you read it carefully here it says colorless spells so that means your aldrazi your artifacts as long as it's colorless it will trigger cascade it doesn't have, it doesn't say creature it doesn't say type it's just colorless spells even um all this dust, the seven man spell would trigger Zodok. But of course, this commander is mainly an Eldrazi commander. Previously, I've done a deck tech on our favorite commander, Kozilek, the Great Distortion, Eldrazi typo deck. This is our new Eldrazi deck, Zodok. And you're, of course, you're playing the most restrictive um, color commander identity, which is colorless. So no colored spells whatsoever, no colored symbols whatsoever in your deck. So your most most restrictive deck possible, all colorless cards. So I'm glad they made this thing really powerful. As you can see, if you cast the 11 mana Ulamog and you, you cascade into these, you get you know 30 mana worth of 31 mana worth of power all in one. So I think that's pretty cool. Aldrazi decks are easy because there's not a lot of spells, not a lot of color spells. They did add some in the pre-con, which, which we'll get to. There are also cards that are from the pre-con that I did not add. If you have any questions on those, leave them in the comments below. The Eldrazi decks are easy. You play big Eldrazi. You play lots of ramp. I mean, a lot, a lot of ramp. A lot of lands, right? Essentially, it's just made up of three components. Lands, ramp, Eldrazi. That's basically it. The main goal is to cast this on turn six or earlier. Cast a seven drop the next turn. Do the double cascade thing. Then value town. All right, so let's get into the deck tech. But before we get into the deck tech, don't forget to have all your cool little tokens here. I have my little tokens. I have the deck list in the description below if you want to check it out. All right, on to the deck tech. I'm going to open this deck tech up with Eldrazi, of course. That's the theme of the deck. We packed it with the most impactful Eldrazi. No, no, I know there's more Eldrazi than the one we have now right here, but these are, the, I call the lesser Eldrazi because they do not tr trigger Zodok, uh, but they do ramp and give you um, advantage. So we have the three essentially ramp cards. We have Kozilek's Chandler, provides two mana, tap for two. Condor of Ruin, first creature spell you cast each turn costs two less. Even if you pay five mana, as long as the mana value is above um, six, seven or above, you will trigger Cascade, so that discount helps. And it allows you to search for a mana value seven or greater creature, which would help you trigger Zodok as well. And they have Oblivion Sower, which you can take your opponent's lands, help you ramp. So that's really good. Endbringer has lots of text, untaps every turn, deals damage, um, makes things can't attack or block, or draws cards. And you do it every single turn because it untaps every single turn, every single player's turn. Next up, we have the non-legendary fatties. That's right. These are seven mana value or above. 
will trigger the commander. So let's actually read this. This is seven mana value. Bane of Balagad. Balagad. Seven mana. Essentially gives you a Nihilator 2, except for the Nihilator Exiles. Pretty cool. 7-5. Just a simple one, but it's right at that threshold. We can cast this and cast that. Arzan of Kozilek. Nine mana value. When you cast a spell, you can reanimate something. I know the uh, Aldrazi Titans, the original Aldrazi Titans, shuffle back in your deck, but there's other things to reanimate, which I think is pretty cool. Annihilator 2. Yes, Adra Aldrazi have these Annihilator triggers, which are very nasty. Void Winnower. This is the uh, nine mana value card. Stops your opponents uh, from casting cards with even mana values, and then can't attack you with even mana value creatures. So, stops half the things. I think it's cool. And I have a brand new card, Flare of Loyalties. Eight colors, colors. Eldrazi 10 10. When you cast a spell, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature until end of turn. It has base power, toughness 10 10, gains trample, and now they're two in haste. This has another two in trample, so you essentially cast this for 10, steal something, it becomes a 10 10, trample haste with another two. So you can steal one of your impactful uh, opponent's commanders or do random things. Uh, so I think it's really, really cool. This has essentially pseudo haste. It turns, it steals something, turns it into a 10 10 trample, another two, pseudo haste. I l really love having to be able to annihilate um, right away and, you know, Making your opponents bitter is okay because we're playing the most restrictive color combination, so they deserve what's coming to them, which is Annihilator. And speaking of Annihilator, Path Razor of Ulamog, 11 mana value, Annihilator 3. Has Super Menace, can't be blocked except by three or more creatures, 9-9. Nine, nine. Right there. Yes, you probably are paying the biggest creatures available. That's what. So awesome. And then you have It That Betrays, which is insane with Annihilator. 12 mana value total. Annihilator 2. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Wow. So once you annihilate, they sacrifice real cards. You take it, and they become yours. The last set of Eldrazi are the legendary Eldrazi Titans. And we have no idea where Zul'Duk come came from. Because I don't know where the third, fourth Eldrazi Titan came from. But maybe in the story line, he'll come, or it'll come, they will come, and just wipe things out and be like haha surprise there's four Eldrazi the titans anyways emrakul the aeon's torn is banned in commander so that's why there's only one emrakul we have the two original titans from rise of the eldrazi kozlak and ulamog and they both have cast triggers draw four cards cast destroy target permanent this is indestructible both annihilator four and they have a clause if they go to a graveyard you shuffle everything your, your graveyard back to your library along with the titans these things are the reprint of the Titans, which do not have that graveyard thing, so can be reanimated. We have Kozlak, the Great Distortion, which is, I think, one of the best Eldrazi commanders. So this deck is made to have, you know, swap old commanders. You swap any of these commanders out. The best one here, Kozlak, would be your best colors commander. I still believe so, but still fun to play Cascade because I love the um, randomness of it. Eight colors, colors. When you uh, cast Kozlak, if you have fewer than seven cards, draw equal to the difference. And you have Menace. Discard a card with mana value X. Counter target spell with mana value X. So you can have some, some game against other decks with a little counter spell action there. And it's free. You just have to discard it. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. You exile two permanents when you cast it. Indestructible. And this is the part that gets people really worked up. Whenever Ulamog attacks, defending player exiles top 20 cards of their library. People hate that. Even though... As long as you have cards in your library, it doesn't matter unless your combo piece is gone. But just milling people out makes them bitter, so that's amazing. This, now you thought that makes people bitter, and Annihilator makes people bitter. This one makes people super, super bitter. And of course, that's why we're playing it. Emrakul, the Promise End, 13 mana value. Costs one less to cast for each card type among cards in your graveyard. Uh, usually not, not that much of a discount, maybe two or three or four if you're lucky. But the cool part is when you cast it, gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, that player takes an extra turn. So essentially, you gain control, and then they gain back control. Um, flying trample protection from instance. So really cool. Remember what I said in the beginning. Eldrazi decks are basically land, ramp, and fatties, or Eldrazi's. So this is part, not even, this is just the beginning of our ramp package. We have creature ramp right there. This makes... 
Palladium Mirror makes two uh, colors. Burnished Heart can get two Waste. I love that they, when they printed Waste that you use that to get um, use these cards right here in your colorless decks to help you out. Solemn Simba Rackham gets one Waste. However, one mana value ramp in Soul Ring, of course. No zero mana value ramp. But if you want to run Mana Crypt, you know, be my guest. I just um, don't like Mana Crypt that much because of, not because it's too powerful, but because I just hate flipping the coin every turn. It takes too much game actions. We have a two mana ramp. We have our usual two for one. You pay two mana, you get one mana return. Look at my old Torque, Mind Stone, Thought Vessel. Ever Filling Chalice right here so you can multi-kick it, make it even bigger. So I think it's really good. Uh, speaking of making things bigger, Skyclave Relic. You can um, pay three, make a single mana rock, or pay six, make three mana rocks. So it's cool here. Unstable Obelisk. Let's read this. I think this, this was just recently reprinted in uh, Commander Masters. You you pay you just make uh, one colorless mana. Three for one is not that great rate, but you pay seven, sack it, destroy something. So sometimes we do have very few interaction pieces here because you know we are playing colorless. So you need something that could possibly destroy something. But that's also Mana Rock's pretty neat. Worn Power Stone, two, three for two. Not a bad rate, but it comes into play tapped. Urza's Incubator, great rate because you, you pay three. This ETBs, you choose Aldrazi, you get two uh, mana discount for those Aldrazi. Even more ramp. It's still not over yet, trust me. You have a four mana ramp here, four for two. Not bad. You can draw cards or exile graveyards here. Four for three, which is really good. Comes in play untapped. You have your five mana ramp. I know it keeps going. Five mana ramp. Forsaken Monument. Gives your creatures a buff right here. And it ramps by essentially giving you an extra colorless. When you tap a permanent for colorless, any permanent lands or rocks, add additional colorless. So it's really good ramp here. And when you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. We have Gilded Lotus. Essentially three, uh, five for three. It makes colored, but you know, five for three is not bad. This is four for three, five for three. They have six for three. Dreams from Heger, and this is like a double mind stone. This is like a, a triple mind stone. Planar Bridge. This is ramp ish. It's ramp and tutor. You pay six, does nothing. Then you pay eight, get any permanent card from your library and put it onto the battlefield. You can even get Dark Steel Monolith, a brand new card from Commander Masters, the um, pre con. Eight, indestructible. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a colorless spell you cast from hand. Worked great with Zoldo. And then you, you could also trigger, play this, a Dark Silver Manlith, trigger Zoldok, get double Cascade. Then play another thing from hand, trigger Zoldok again, double Cascade. So it's really, really good. Ugin Ineffable, six mana for two discount. But colorless spells you cast uh, cost two less to cast. The important thing is you can manifest, make 2-2, two, two, but the most important thing, I mean, you can just pay negative 3, destroy target permanent, that's one or more colors. So you can destroy things. You know, having your ramp package have interactions is really good. Again, we're lacking interaction because we're, you know, we're colorless. I believe this is my fourth screen of ramp. That's why this is ramp.deck. Here, this is the tutor ramp right there. Wait for us bottle, you can do it on the cheap, turn 1, then ramp, turn 2, get a waste. Right there. Moon Silver Key can get you a land or a mana rock, depending on what you need. Very versatile. Thematic Compass can keep, keep getting you waste and turn, turns around, turns into the Maze of Ith. Expedition Map can get you maybe an Eldrazi Temple, Eye of Ugin for mana advantage or get the Urzatron. So this depends. Very flexible again. Due to the lack of interaction, as I mentioned before, we do have some a, uh, colorless re removal spells, some air quotes. Here we have Steel Hellkite. And I think, I know it's below the, the Zodok, Zodok threshold at six mana value, but it's so good. Flying, then you can pump it and then destroy each non land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Only activate once. So you can just do this, pay zero, destroy all the treasures. I think the room, if you can connect with Steel Hellkite, kaboom, pay two, destroy all the mana rocks, pay one, destroy. A soul ring or whatever it's so good so i think it's worth having even though it's not really synergistic with the commander now what's synergistic is mirror golem etb destroy target non land permanent it's excellent with the commander cityscape leveler is like mirror golem uh but this is cast trigger when you cast a spell whenever and whenever it attacks destroy up to one target non land permanent the controller makes a power stone to token and then you can unearth it to do it again so that's really cool and then we have what i call player removal 
Blight Steel Colossus. It's a uh, 12 mana value 11 11. Um, trample, in fact, indestructible. It's wonderful. More removal. Those are creature removal. Now we have spell removal and then artifact removal. We have all is dust, seven mana value, which again does trigger the commander. Each player sacrifices all color permits they control. That's neat. We have a brand new card, Calamity of Titans, four colors, colors. Additional, ca additional cost to cast a spell, reveal a colorless creature from your hand. Sometimes you don't have one, so this is a dead card, but when you do have one, you can exile each creature in Planeswalker with mana value less than the reveal card's mana value. So you can really wipe the board. If you know you have this card and a creature, you can play to that. Play your mana rocks. Keep playing your mana rocks. And then when everybody's overcommitting, boom, wrath them all away and start going crazy. You have Ugin, which is one of the best um, rafts for our colorless deck here. This is the important part. It's right there. Negative X. Exile each permanent with mana value X or less. That's one or more colors. That's the really important part. So you just wipe out everybody's board except for yours. So all this dust, Ugin, are very good. Then you have some new cards from Brothers War, not the pre-con. This is a new pre-con card. Portal to Phyrexia. Nine mana value. Does trigger the commander. When ETBs, each opponent attacks three creatures, so it's nine creatures across the board. And then beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard, any graveyard, onto a battlefield under your control. It's, it's also Phyrexian. Okay, that's insane as well. Triggers a commander. So... If you notice, before I keep moving on here to these two cards, is that this deck has lots of ramps, but when you can ramp into these big spells, they're very, very impactful. That's why we have not as many impactful, not as many spells and lots more ramp, but when we do play a spell, very impactful. So I think things to note, like you say, maybe you only have like 30 cards that actually do something and they're all ramp and lands. Those 30 cards do major things. That's why, that's why we have the deck the way we have it. Then we have Oblivion Stone and Karn's Silex. Oblivion Stone, you could uh, pay three, then it does nothing, of course. Pay four, put a fake counter target permanent. Pay five, sack Oblivion Stone, and destroy each non land permanent without a fake counter. Then remove all fake counters. Essentially, you just keep this around, put a fake counter on Ugin, and then you, you decide to put a fake counter on Porphyrexia, and then you destroy the rest. Uh, this does will destroy your mana rocks. It is a hard reset for everything, but it's important. To, to have something like that just in case things get out of control. Karn Silex, three mana value, ETB taps. Players can't pay life or to cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities, including those um, good fetch lands. They need to X tap, exile this. Destroy each non land permanent with mana value X or less. Activate only as a sorcery. So this is a button to release to, you know, you ETB tap, you untap next turn, then you can destroy all the small stuff, maybe mana value five. Boom, keep your commander around, wipe the board, start cascading, and start winning. This does remove your mana rocks, so just also be careful and remember that as well. Sometimes we want to grant haste to our big Aldrazi Titans. That is why we have these that has built-in protection. Right there, we have Commander's Plate, which is ultimate protection in a colorless deck. Creep Creature gets plus or three and has protection from all colors, otherwise known as each color that's not in your commander's color identity, all colors. Equip Commander 3. Equip 5. Boom. Pay 1 mana to put it on the battlefield. 3 to equip to your commander. Has protection from essentially everything. Very good. Warping Wheel. You never see this coming because the important line is counter target sorcery. I love that. You just never see it coming. The last set of cards before we get to the mana base are the utility cards. You know, some cool cards. But first, we'll go to the new one. Rise of the Eldrazi. It's got a name. I mean, it's got a card. Nine colors, colors, colors. That is 12 mana value. But this spell cannot be countered. It's great. And it's got each of the Aldrazi Titans uh, cast triggers. Destroy target permanent from Ulamog. Target player draws four cards from Kozilek. And then Emrakul, the Ants Torn, taking an extra turn after this one. Exile, Rise of the Eldrazi. So it's uh, pretty cool. We have Wandering Archaic, card advantage card. Five mana value. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two. If they don't, then you get to copy it. Uh, then it has, you know, the backside. Uh, don't read that. It's not that good. Soul Guide Lantern, Graveyard Hate. We have a new card, another new card. Skittering Cicada. Three mana value. Creature Insect, Flash. You may cast colorless spells as though they had Flash. So 
One of the issues with Eldrazi is you cast it, you cascade to your Eldrazi, they board wipe you. It sucks. So you can have this. You could just wait till the player before you use end step. Boom, start flashing in things, cascading things in, and then attack right away. That's cool. Then it has another ability when you cast a colorless spell until end of turn. Skidding, skittering Cicada gains trample and gets plus X, plus X, where X is a spell's mana value. Now, this stacks too. Remember that. Is that it keeps getting plus X, plus X. You could cast one colorless spell, right? Let's say Rise of Eldrazi plus 12, plus 12. Plus one, one or archaic, plus five, plus five. So you get plus 17, plus 17. It keeps stacking on. So it gets big and it gets dangerous and can blow people out. Then you have Mystic Forge Geo Golem, Mystic Forge card drawing engine. Look, may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non land card, which is our deck, essentially. Pay one life, exile the top card of your library. So if there's a land stuck or something you can't cast, exile it, see the next one, see if you can cast that. So card advantage engine there. Geode Golem, I think it's really cool. Five mana trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast your commander from the command zone without paying his mana cost. So you get this thing early, whip in, play your commander. Or if your commander has commander tax, like you played your commander two times, it's going to be really expensive. The um, third time, 12 mana value, you can do this and try to cheat it out. So I like, I just really like having the early game cheat out. And then this is mainly for Kozilek, but that's why I like the hot swappable commanders that we have. Finally, we made it to the land. These are things that Exhibition Map can get. These are the lands that can produce more than one mana, two mana. Eldrazi Temple. One colorless for regular spells or two colorless for a Drazi spell, including all his dust because that's a uh, tribal instant. I have Ugin. It's a weird one because it doesn't actually produce mana, but it discounts your Eldrazi spell to two less to cast. I think it's really good. Then you pay seven tap, then you search for a colorless creature card. Any colorless creature card, including your um, Blight Steel Colossus, Ancient Tomb, tap for two, Gildas Commons. You got bounce, it's a bounce land, but colorless bounce land. Temple of the False Gods, tap for two if you have five or more lands. Shrine of the Forsaken God, you can tap for two if you have seven or more lands. So lots of tapping for two because we need lots of mana, of course. Other lands I can potentially tap for more than one. Urza's Tower can potentially tap for three. Mine, Power Plant. And then you have Urza's Factory. That's mainly for Urza's Workshop. Urza's Workshop is a newish card. It's a tap to add one colorless. Metalcraft, add... One colors for each Urza's land you control. Activate only if you control three or more artifacts. We're definitely going to have three or more artifacts. All these are Urza's lands. So we have five Urza's lands. So if you have five of these lands, then you tap this to produce five mana. Urza's factory is mainly because of its Urza's uh, land type. But if you need, you can play seven tap, make a 2-2 two -two assembly worker. The beauty about playing a colors deck is you can play tons and tons of utility lands. Don't cut so much on your waste. I think you have seven waste enough to tutor out with our various uh, basic land tutor effects. But we have other colorless cards, land destruction, uh, thing destruction, permanent destruction, uh, graver destruction, arcane uh, lighthouse gets rid of uh, hexproof and indestructible, I believe. Hexproof shroud uh, can undo lightning greaves. Homeward path gets your stuff back. We have some card draw right here. Archer of Raska, secret rest, uh, wreckage, war room. This is the best war room because you take zero damage. Pay three, tap, take zero damage. Inventor's fair, you can tutor things out. Uh, mirror pool, you could uh, do lots of things. Let's actually read it real quick here. You it ETB taps, you sack it, you copy target engine or sorcerer spell you control. Maybe rise over the Eldrazi if you have three extra mana laying around. This one plus, or four extra mana, this one plus uh, three more, maybe. Uh, sack it and make a token of um, a creature, including Blight Steel Colossus. It's not legendary, remember that. Command Beacon to get your commander back because if you cast it too many times. Sanctum of Ugin, essentially is to your deck for. A creature so as whenever you cast a color spell with mana value seven or greater you may sacrifice this land if you do search your library for a colorless creature card put reveal it put in your hand and shelf your library any creature as long as it's colorless the last set of fun of lands rogues passage to you know make things unblockable microsoft gardens to copy um artifacts cavern souls so your aldrazis are uncounterable of course crawling barons this is just for fun this is my pet card it just uh, puts two plus one plus one counters on this and makes it land, makes it into a creature if you want to. Feel it dead, extremely good because I have tons of different land types as you saw. And you make zombies, uh, ruins of Orn Reef, plus one plus one counters. Tyrite Sanctum, 
gives your uh, legendary creatures indestructible, of course. Uh, you got to turn into gods first, and then indestructible gods, god titans. Then you have Decimus Stage of Asu to copy any of these fun of lands that you have, which are a lot of, which I think is really cool. Here, or any of the lands produce two or more mana, or Urza's lands, so I think that's awesome. Then you have your waste, our seven waste, right here in the deck. All right. With that being said, that is the deck text so far. If you have enjoyed this video so far, give the video a thumbs up, smash subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be alerted for videos in the future. So we're going to take the rest of our deck here. We're going to shuffle this deck up. We're going to do some gold fishing, and we're going to cascade in style. We'll be right back. All right. We are back. Turn one. Let's use our special dice, our purple playing with power dice, which is really cool. I'm happy to get those. Turn one with our Eldrazi deck. That's right, we are playing with Eldrazi, playing with power. Now, I did have to take a mulligan. Remember, if you don't get the good ramp, you want to mulligan it back. Ramp is important. Now, with Kozlak, you, you can have ramp and no creatures because Kozlak will refill your hand. Now, with Zuldok, it's different. You want ramp and maybe like one dude, which we, which we have. So essentially, ramp, dude. Perfect. So turn one. No ETB tap lands. We'll just play one of these guys. Here, it doesn't matter. Tyrant Sanctum. Oh, we didn't draw our card yet. I got too excited. Void Winnower. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll put that in our nine drop area. Right there. Turn two. Eldrazi Temple. That'll be really good in the future. When we cast these or cast our commander, but we will play Eldrazi Temple. We'll play our Mana Rock. Moon Silver Key can find a land or a bigger Mana Rock if we need to. So we'll play that. Uh, Thought Vessel. Okay, untap. Turn three. Boom. Ooh. Right on time. Hedron Archive. Okay, now maybe we can find our six Mana one. We do this. Tap one, two, three, four. Hedron Archive. Tap that for a Moon Silver Key. Okay, too bad I don't have mana left over to actually sack it, but you know, can't always win. Turn four. Okay, so this is where things get interesting. Liquid Metal Torque, okay. Could use that last turn, that'd be better than that. Sometimes you get things one turn too late. We'll play our land here. So we are missing a land, we can get Ancient Tomb with this. Or we can get a bigger mana rock. Let's see here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can get a Dreamstone Hedron and cast this. I think that's what we want to do. Or we can get our um, get our uh, Forsaken Monument. Forsaken Monument is not cannot be. You know, let's just crack it. You know, I keep saying what we want to get. Let's crack it. And let's see. That's how it usually works. Um, we can get a land or something that produces mana. I think we want a mana rock. Definitely a mana rock. Big man rock has got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we want to use all six of those manas. Um, Dreamstone Hedron is good. I wish we could get this one. This one does not is not a mana rock. This one's not a mana rock either. Arrow Flowing Chalice. But this one's better. Okay. Let's see here. So this Dreamstone Hedron might be the way to go here. We could have cast our commander, but you know, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. We could have cast our commander, but we don't have a guaranteed land. Um, so that's the problem here. Um, if we had a guaranteed land, we could cast a commander, then the nine drop afterwards. So we want to just have uh, more of a guarantee. So we're going to get, let's see here, hmm, not that one. The one that makes the most mana. Third dynamo costs four. No, we're going to Dreamstone Hedron. Right there. This one, you can get this one too, but the copy's going to play tap, so you only get one mana to use. You can't play your li Liquid Metal Torque after that. All right, so let's get our Dreamstone Hedron. That's the what we're going to get. Right there, we set up. And remember, they, you, you, you can sack them and draw cards if you needed, you know, start drawing some cards. So we'll shuffle this deck up. Here, we'll do a random cut, of course. That's what we do. On Vex MTG channel, we do random cuts. Mm -hmm. There, so we'll play one, two, three, four, five. Cast Dream Zone Hedron right there. It sucks if we're gonna miss a land drop though. This has 40, almost 40 lands maybe. Tons of mana, but we could tap Dream Zone Hedron. 
right there for our liquid metal torque. We still have another mana rock left over right there. Okay, so we're ready for next turn. Ready for next turn. So next turn, turn five. Right there, we have lots of manas here. Land, maybe? Born Power Stone, more mana, okay. We have our command system. We're gonna cast our commander. This produces two, three, four, five, six. Now we still have six mana left over right there. Our hand looks pretty darn good, so we'll tap these two for Gilded Lotus. There, we'll tap Gilded Lotus for Worn Power Stone, so now we have tons of manas. Um, and then we can, we can always sack these to draw cards. This draws three, two, three, this draws two, so that's always a good option here. Now we have our commander out. Turn six is where we have fun. Pass turn. All right, we'll turn six. This is apparently playing with power things, turn six. Always confusing me because I always think it's turn one. So we'll play our makes three mana, makes two mana, makes one mana pile. There we go. We'll put them back here, somewhere in our land pile as well. That's what people do, I guess. We'll draw a card. Urza's Workshop. Do we have another Urza? No. Uh, wah, wah, wah. So it produces just one. That's a land. That's pretty good. Okay, so we'll just cast uh, Void Winnower right there. That's a more impactful one. We could cast Urza and Kozlak. We don't have anything in our graveyard. So cast Void Winnower. We will tap our lands appropriate. I'll draw a Temple. Uh, Guild with Lotus. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there we go. Only tap four things. Then we'll cast this on the stack. This is on the stack. We'll cascade right here. So anything eight or lower, we'll cast. Let's see, give me something good. All lands. There it is. All lands. Blight still. Oh, it's not eight or lower. Fortunate. Okay, these are all the lands. Are oh, path razor not that good enough. Geode golem. That is quite unfortunate. Geode golem. Let's keep going for next cascade. We might be able to get a mana rock and cast our other nine mana spell. Here we go. Ugin the Ineffable. That is kind of a mana rock. Right there. Boom. So I think it's minus two. Yeah. I think we, we might be able to cast this one too. It'll just be an Aldrazi with a Nihilator two, but two mana here. Two. Count three, four, five, six, seventy nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, okay, we'll do it again. Spin the wheel again. We will do Artisan of Kozilect. Commander's Plate, that's one of them. That does happen. Oh, Ulamog, too big. Ulamog, too big. Wayfarers, Bobble, want, want, want. Sometimes these things do happen. All right. Well, we can equip. Can we equip? No, we can't. We only have two mana left over, so we cannot equip. So let's put this here. We could attack if we can. We can remove something with Ulamog, with uh, Ugin right there. So let's say we do remove something. Uh, these came into play, these four. So it did cast quite a bit of spells. It's pretty cool. You can attack if you want to. Let's play one more turn, see what we get. Uh, before then, we'll just tap our two to crack away first bottle because, you know, we need more mana, right? That's exactly what we need. Get a, um, a waste in the play tapped here. Tons of mana, of course. Let's shuffle this deck up here. And then we'll do a cut and we'll move on. Oh, come on, I gotta use the right dice here. Turn seven. Now we have more mana than we would ever need. We have these right here. These mana rocks here. Okay, we're gonna draw our card. We have zero cards, we're hell-bent. Uh, we do have ability to draw cards with Archer of Raska because we do have the Sitting's Blessing. Ignore my squirrel tokens there on the bottom. Yes, I use these to kind of give an angle because the light's kind of like with the foil commander, uh, very reflective, so a uh, behind the scenes moment there. We do have this so we can draw a card with uh, Arch of Raska. That's pretty cool. Okay, we'll draw a card, anything good? Hoo! Warping Whale. Oh, that is not um, what we asked for, but that's okay. What we'll do is we will, you know what, we want to maximize our ability to win. So we're going to tap this, tap these two. We'll tap Gilded Lotus. Sack Dreams on Hedron. 
Draw three cards. That's right. You got three more chances at this. One, two, three. All right. That's okay. We're not done yet. We can play our Sanctum of Ugin right there. We can, again, tap more mana. Two, three, four, five. We tap Archer of Raska. We still have lots of mana left over, by the way. Draw another card. Boom, Meteor Golem. There we go. Perfect. Let's spin that wheel again. Let's cast our Meteor Golem right here. Two discount. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Spin that wheel. Boom. Nope. Half of it. So we get six or below. It's getting Circadia. Play things at fast speed. That's pretty good. Karn Silex comes into play tapped. We go in plus Ugin right here. Manifest a card. Right there. Let's see where it is. Oh, land. I know we get pretty unlucky. This goes back to the bottom of our deck right there. I think we've done enough damage, right? I think so. So, you know, sometimes this just shows you cascading. Uh, if this was cause like you would draw tons of cards. You draw seven cards. So, you know, this, this commander is powerful, but it is random. Sometimes you get things that you wouldn't expect, like the commander's plate, some um, mana rocks. Sometimes, as I showed you in the very beginning of the, the video, you go Eldrazi Titan, Eldrazi Titan, Eldrazi Titan, and that's amazing. Anyways, that's essentially how this deck plays out. You got to you know, embrace the randomness. Sometimes you go really high. Sometimes you go really low. Uh, the cool part about it is that you have utility things that help you draw more cards. Your Hedron Archive help draw cards. Archer of Vraska, draw some cards. Sanctum of Ugin. Uh, we technically should have triggered it with Meteor Golem. Let's pretend we did right there. We triggered it with Meteor Golem. Sack it. Get a colorless creature. Get the biggest baddie that we can possibly find. It that betrays, I think, at this point, we do need a uh, cause elect right there. Uh, so where is our big boy cause elect? To just draw up our cards. Because this cause elect will just draw all seven cards. So cause elect, the great distortion. This is a good utility land to get with an uh, exhibition map. So our Sanctum of Ugin triggered. Right there, reveal it. Next turn, we have a big boy cause elect to play to cascade into and you know what it's not over it's not over i still have hope because remember your lands do things because i'm so used to my lands tap for man not doing things but your lands do do things this is in our hand right here let's play one more turn just one more turn why not Karn side likes to destroy things uh, not today probably untap everything this is in our hand draw a card land no problem so you play this land you have two discount here um I'll draw us a temple, two, that's four. Let's see what else we got here. Four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one waste, 10, and make room. Gotta make room, right? Make room for the big boy. So you go, boom, cause that great distortion. Trigger cascade, lightning greaves. Uh, you attack with cause elect. Soul Guide Lantern. So not the greatest one, but you do get to draw ten, seven cards with Cause Elect, which is great. So you have seven cards here. Oh, Ulamog, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You cast your Soul Ring here. Oh, how much is Ulamog? 11. Do we have 11 here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We could even do 12 if we had to. Uh, 12, Ulamog Infinite Gyre, destroy something, equip with Lightning Greaves, kaboom, Annihilator 4, so the deck finally gets going, right there, it that betrays next turn, so you, your engine's running here, or you can discard a 5 mana value card to counter a 5 mana value card with Kozilect, anyways, that is essentially how the deck works, it's random, if you draw your powerful cards, you are winning, because, you know, again, you're colorless, you don't have, like, blue card draw and all this cool stuff for green ramp. Yeah, you just got to do what you got to do. That is the deck. If you enjoyed Deck Tech, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit notification bell to be alerted for videos in the future. And as always, the deck list in this, is in the description below. I almost forgot that. Then, as always, have a wonderful day.